we were talking about the Charleston kitchens, the Caribbean kitchens. So I left Charleston in 2004. Um, I worked in all kind of high-end kitchens, right? I started off as a busboy, a food runner. I worked my way up through the, you know, through the ranks, fry, cook, saute, working grill, working in these really great kitchens. I left Charleston in 2004, I moved to the Virgin Islands. Um, I had a connect there that wasn't like, like family to me. I moved down there, ended up going down there, was the worst person I ever met in my life. I was in St. Thomas with nobody by myself, two months in, in the streets. Found my way through, got with good people. Four years later, I was back home, successful. Went back to work for people in Charleston. And I had, you know, and as, listen, there's nothing wrong with working for people. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, if you got a passion to do your own thing, learn from them, ask questions. That's what I did. I was like, if I'm gonna be working for you, I'm gonna ask questions. I'm gonna be like begging them, what you, how you do this, how you do that. Don't be scared to ask questions. Because when I came back to Charleston, I was working for people. And then I was like, no, I'm tired of it. So I went from the Charleston kitchen to the Caribbean kitchens to my kitchen. Now I do my own thing. And that's always how it's gonna be for me now. I can't go back. But everybody has a different role in life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a different role. And don't be afraid of what somebody else got to say to you. If you're doing bad, they're going to talk about you. If you got all the money in the world, they're going to talk about you. It don't even matter, yo. People are going to say something about you no matter what. That's life. Don't study them. Do you. Don't worry about what the crowd doing. Don't worry about what everybody else got to say. The more on the block, they're going to talk no matter what. That's just how we roll, you know? Don't study that. Do you. Don't be ashamed about what you're trying to do because ain't nobody else walking in your shoes. Nobody else walking in your shoes. They going, like I said, they going to talk regardless. I still, I still get shitted on. Whatever. I'm putting money in my pocket. You ain't doing that for me. And people, the right people going to come around y'all. Um, TV, I was in New York Times, all that stuff. That stuff don't matter. This is what matters to me. I done been on Food Network. I done been on Guys Grocery Games. It was fun. I know y'all watch Food Network. I've been on Guy Grocery Games. I was on the Anthony Bourdain show. I've been on a couple other shows. That don't mean nothing. Because guess what? Ain't nobody after them shows say, hey, here's a couple, couple grand. Let me do something for you. It was like, oh, you on the show. Cool. You gotta realize this right here? It's still a handicap, but it's not a handicap for us because it's a power thing because this is powerful. What we have is powerful, and that's why they fear a lot of it. That's why ain't nobody giving me nothing, so I'm just taking it. You got to take it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, go hard. Go hard. It's frustrating some days, yo. It's, I'm not always the, every morning waking up, I ain't always the happy. I'm happy to be alive, but you know, that's the, the, the human existence. You can't have happiness without sadness, and vice versa. You gonna go through it. But remember this, when you wake up every day and you walk and you breathe in, you got life. No matter how frustrating it can get, you gotta continue to push, continue to strive. I'm not where I wanna be yet. Still looking for to get into a building, you know, still looking to, you know, I'm, I'm still hustling out here. Catering life is like, I'm hustling. So when I get back home, I got clients to get to. It's a hustle, but I love it. And if you love something, you will succeed. You have to understand that it's in every one of y'all in here. I mean, I've been around y'all. Y'all make me laugh. You know, when I see some of y'all having a bad day, I want to give you, what's up, you good? Because I'm here to support, man. We here for each other. At the end of the day, we all we got. We all we got. And people are here for y'all. If they see that you really want it, somebody's gonna be there for you. And it's gonna be somebody you don't even expect. If you rocking hard, they gonna rock with you. Believe that. Do not give up on yourself. Do not give up on your passions. Do not give up on life. Push. It ain't easy out here. Like when we say out here, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Believe me, I'm a testament to it. I'm a testament to it. I thought I was going, like I said, I was got these two big gigs. I was like, oh, I'm gonna quit my little part-time job, my little safe, safe haven. Couldn't pay rent. It was like one of the coldest winters back down south. You know, we don't deal with the cold like that. 
I had no, my landlord ain't fixed my AC, and I had no heat. I couldn't pay no rent. Later on, I mean, later on rent every month. She put me out. I was like, damn, I could have, right then I could have been like, man, I'm going back to work for these people. Nah, and then somebody was there for me. Somebody's always gonna be there for y'all if y'all have that good energy. I believe in energy, good vibes. Listen, every one of y'all in here have something special. Every one of y'all. Y'all don't hear that every day, right? But every one of y'all here have something special about y'all. There's something beautiful. And some of y'all may have not even found out what that is yet, but it's in y'all. It's there. Follow your dream, follow your goals. You know, if you got kids, you got responsibilities, you might not be able to do your own thing, you gotta work for somebody, but take ownership. You know what I'm saying? Take ownership, because guess what? You could be running a whole corporate entity. You could be running a corporate catering company. You could be running several farms. You could be doing all this. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's not an entrepreneur. Everybody can't be on their own because of situations, but it's in every one of y'all to be successful. Every one of y'all here. Everybody has something special about them. I keep saying that, right? Because I believe that. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Every one of y'all in here. Anybody got any questions? Anything you want to say? Yes, in the back. I realize that um, <coughs> coming into the world, a lot of different chef here's a lot of them to have been experiencing discouragement from the person that they look up to. Sometimes it would be family, sometimes it would be friends, or sometimes it would be a mentor. In your professional opinion, have you ever experienced someone that you honestly looked up to that discouraged you or hurt you to the point where it kind of tainted your passion? What did you need to overcome? And what mm. advice can you give to us in the future if this was to happen? What you need to do? Well, that if that person, if somebody discourages you, then somebody else is going to be there that, that, that believes in you. You know, sometimes, sometimes people you look up to, I, for, for example, I won't say my father was discouraged with me. He was like, you cooking? Like, you cooking? Like, what is that? You know, like, when I, like, when I flunked out of college, right, and I had to be in the back of my parents' house, and I started cooking, my daddy was like, what you doing? You cooking? He, I won't say he believed in his son, but he could not stand what I was doing. But guess what? I'm going to do me because this is what I want to do. So now he's like, wow, he's proud because he saw how much I continued to push and said I wasn't going to settle. I wasn't just going to be sitting there and just be a regular, just, just cooking. You know, I wanted to work my way up. And I think a lot of times we, we get to be settled. We get complacent. And I wasn't complacent. So now my, my father is my biggest fan. Um, you won't get discouraged. You know, there's going to be people who tell you, oh, why are you doing that? People who you love, you can't do that. Well, because they can't do it, don't mean you can't do it. You do you, right? No matter what, do you. It don't matter what they say, do you. Um, other than that, like, I've, I've worked with chefs. I've worked with chefs who have pushed me, and I've worked with chefs who were just straight up assholes. Like, like, dude, you need, to, you need to get a life. You know, just like, ridiculous. But you know what? You navigate through that. You know, you don't let nobody belittle you or, or treat you some type of way. You know, some chefs are just like, I mean, y'all work with y'all work with chefs. Some chefs are like, blah, 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 blah. you know what? Let that. Okay, that's a moment in time. Don't get caught up in moments in time. Don't let a moment in time discourage your day, discourage your week, discourage your month. Because people are always going to try to quote unquote shit on you, right? What is an everyday thing? Everyday thing? Well, something's an everyday thing, and the environment ain't right. I say I advise you to move on, you know? But at the same time, if it's, if it's something that you have to fight through, you fight through it because it's still a moment in time. Because how long a day in that day you with that person? They ain't sleeping, they ain't sleeping in the bed with you, right? They wake up with you the next morning? Nah. 
you had sometimes you had to have in your mind like you know what that person got issues and I feel for whoever sleep with them at night you know what I'm saying so you just let that go. it's almost like you have to have that mental fortitude to be like you know what whatever that's just who the person is they miserable they miserable no as long as it's not physically disrespecting you you know I know mental mental um, abuse can be hard but sometimes you have to say you know what that person has issues let me keep doing me and doing my job right and fight through. That's a, that's a hard part. I think sometimes mental abuse is harder, than, is, I won't say worse than physical abuse, but almost just as bad. But sometimes you have to fight through. I had chefs who, listen, I had a chef who had an alcohol problem. I remember one time I came to work. I don't know if you had the same thing, like we gave you a 15 minute grace period to be at work on time. I was, at that 15 minute grace period, I walked in the, in the kitchen. This dude start cussing, you're late, blah, blah, blah. Put the knife out, what the hell? Look at this dude, this is before service. It's like, you know what? People like that ain't gonna last anyway, because guess what? Three months later, he was gone. His energy was like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? So you just had to fight through it. Some people was like that. You know, some people like that. You, you, and, and, and you have to be strong here. I think that's. 75% of this is mental. The other 25% is just cooking. That's the easy part. The cooking is the easy part. The mental part is the hard part. Sometimes a chef trying to break you down to make you better. You could be cooking and the chef like, so what's that? Where does this vegetable come from? What farm does it come from? What kind of oil are you using? Why are you in the middle of a busy push? Because they want to build you to be stronger. You may think, Man, why are you bothering me? But sometimes you have to have this Mental. 75% of it is mental. 75%. Any other questions? And then we done, we done, so the thing is, we done had our Q&A with each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> so So, you know, being from home, right, being back in Charleston, right, like, Charleston is different than the rest of South Carolina. It's very different. Um, the culture is different. The way we speak, the food we eat is different than other parts of the state. Um, you know, growing up, we didn't really realize what we were. In a sense, like, I kind of, I knew it. And for us, it was more like a thing, like, oh, like, my homeboys went to, like, who go off to, out, out of town, go out of state. They would be out, and they'd be like, man, everybody loved the way we talk, you know, da, 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 da. They call us Jafakins and all this stuff, and da, 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 man, the boy, them. I live in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Oh, VI, UVI, yeah, all right, all right. Um, so put it this way, I, when I went to the West Indies, when I went to the Virgin Islands, that's when it hit me, like, whoa. Because I would be talking like, you know, we'd be out you know, partying and have a few drinks, and that, when I get animated, that, it really comes out, right? And my partner was like, they went in front, she's like, dang, where he from, Down Island, he from St. Lucia, he from Barbados? And I was like, nah, I'm from Charleston. I didn't think nobody knew about it. And I was surprised at the amount of Haitians and Jamaicans and people, because St. Thomas is full of influx of people from other islands. And they would talk to me about my culture. Back home, we didn't really talk about our culture. It was something that was almost like, for the older generation, it was almost like a, a, a thing of disgrace. Like I said, if you call somebody Geechee back in the day, it was a fight. Um, I went to St. Thomas, how much they embraced in the West Indies, how much, you know, you embrace your culture. You know, here in America, they try to make us so Americanized. You have to speak proper and da 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 and da 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 to make it. I'm in the West Indies looking at TV and TV shows say Indy River. Right, right. Spelled Indy River on the TV. You ain't gonna see that really here too much. 